Call your next witness. The government calls uh, Jack Brewer. Yes, sir. If you would, please. If you come forward. He's been sworn. You're Mr. Brewer, if you would, please, sir. You've been sworn, have you not? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, where do you presently reside, Mr. Brewer? Right now, I presently reside in the city of Austin, Texas. Okay. Mr. Brewer, directing your attention to Friday, November the 22nd, 1963, the day President Kennedy was assassinated, were you the manager of Hardy's Shoe Shop at 213 West Jefferson Boulevard in Dallas? Yes, that's correct. How did you find out about the assassination, Mr. Brewer, that day? I had been listening to the... Uh, presidential arrival and the uh, parade on the transistor radio and then they broke in and said that the uh, president had been shot. About 45 minutes or so later, that is around 1.15 in the afternoon, was it also reported over the radio that a police officer had been shot in the Oak Cliff area of Dallas? Yes. Is Oak Cliff the area in which your store was located? Right. Yes. Would you describe what happened after you heard on the radio that an officer had been shot? Uh, shortly after that, there were police cars, sirens, I heard, that were uh, traveling down Zangs and Jefferson Boulevard. Westbound on Jefferson? Yes. Right. And uh, a short time later, this man walked into the lobby of my store. Did you get a good look at his face? Yes, I did. Uh, how far away were you from him? Probably around 10 feet. Okay. Uh, A2, photograph Mr. Oswald. <laughs> That's Lee Harvey Oswald, of course. Is he or is he not the man that was standing uh, in front of your store on the, on the uh, occasion in question? Yes, that is. Okay, could you describe his physical appearance? Well, uh, his hair was somewhat messed up. He uh, looked as though he had been running. He looked scared. Okay, uh, did you feel there was anything suspicious about him apart from his physical appearance? Well, the fact that he was standing and facing me with his back to the street while all of the commotion was... Uh, going on outside, uh, I thought that quite unusual. Did you get the impression that he was trying to uh, ignore the police sirens? Exactly, yes. Did the police cars eventually make a U-turn on Jefferson and start going eastbound? Yes, they made their U-turn, and uh, when they did, Oswald, or the uh, man that stepped into the uh, recessed area, looked over his shoulder, uh, seemed to make sure that they had gone by, and then stepped out. On, back onto the sidewalk and walked up toward the Texas Theater. How far is the Texas Theater from your store? It's in the same block, approximately 50, 60 yards. So he started walking towards the Texas Theater. What did you do at that time? I stepped out from my store and stood on the sidewalk and watched him walk up toward the Texas Theater and saw him enter the theater. And about how far away were you from him at that point? I had not, I was still in front of my store and watched him enter the theater. Okay. And thereupon you, you After proceeded he entered the theater, the theater, I walked up to the theater, asked the cashier if she had uh, seen him or, in fact, sold him a ticket. She said no, she hadn't, that uh, she had been out on the sidewalk, too, watching the police cars. Okay. What's the next thing that happened? I went inside, and the uh, gentleman that worked the concession was there. I asked him to go with me. We looked through the balcony, through the lower floor. I did not see him. We went back to the cashier, and I told her that I had not seen him, but I felt he was still there and to call the police. What's the next thing that happened? I went back and stood by the exit leading out into the alley behind the stage. Uh, right. A few what moments later, next? I'm sorry. What happened next? I'm sorry. Just a few moments later, uh, the house lights in the theater came on, I looked out from the curtain and saw uh, Oswald for the first time uh, in the theater. Uh, as the house lights came on, he got up from his seat, walked to the aisle, and then turned around and sat back down approximately the same seat that he had been occupying. Okay. What's the next thing that happened, sir? Uh, after I saw Oswald, then I heard a noise outside. I opened the exit door. I was grabbed by the policeman. In fact, a gun was held on me. I explained to them that uh, uh, 
a suspect or a suspicious person was in the theater, they asked me to point him out, which I walked out on the stage with a couple of policemen, pointed him out, and uh, the policeman approached him, walked down the aisle toward him, approached him. As the policeman walked into the aisle that Oswald was sitting in, Oswald stood up, he hollered something, I'm not sure what he hollered, and he struck the officer, knocking him backwards. As he had done this, he reached under his shirt and pulled out a revolver. Uh, the officer stood back up, having been knocked down, he stood back up and grabbed at the revolver. There was uh, quite a scuffle there for a few moments, and uh, he was uh, handcuffed and led away. No further questions. Now, Mr. Brewer, you, um, by this time, the time that you noticed Lee out there, um, I take it the sirens were going, you knew that the president had been uh, killed, you knew that Tippetts had been killed, and you were one of the good citizens of Dallas who was alerted. Isn't that true, sir? That's correct. Yes. Now, Lee, when you saw him in the, in the window of the store, looked suspicious to you, didn't he? He did, in fact, yes. Now, you see, the implication from your testimony is that he had shot Officer Tippetts and shot the president and was scared and was running away and trying to hide. Let me give you a hypothetical, a different set of facts. Supposing uh, Mr. Oswald, this man you saw in the store, turned up to be, instead of the guilty person, a patsy. Now supposing that we have such a man that realizes that he has been a patsy, and now he doesn't know what to do. You see him. Now when you see him, would, would, would the expression on his face that you saw, that is one of fear, be consistent, not only on the one hand with a man who had killed the president, but on the other hand, a man who was innocent but was set up as a patsy. I would imagine the expression would probably be the same. Be the same. And one of the things that he cried out, just simply cried out, is that I'm not resisting arrest. Isn't that true? After they had handcuffed him and were leading him away, he said a couple of times, I'm not resisting arrest. And they hit him, didn't they? They did. And, and he was trying to protect himself by saying, I'm not resisting arrest, didn't he? Yes. Thank you. Did you get a chance to look at the man's face as they hauled him out of the theater? Yes, I was no more than three or four feet from him as you, they took him out. You never will forget it, will you, Mr. Brewer? No, I won't. It was a man that was in abject terror. Isn't that true, sir? He was in terror and a state of confusion, yes. Thank you very much. When those officers converged on Lee in the theater, you heard one of the arresting officers say, kill the president, will you? Didn't you? I testified, yet I did, yes. But he was in there uh, purportedly escaping from the Tibbetts murder, wasn't he? I mean, that's what people said, is that he must have run in there to hide from the Tibbetts murder. Isn't that right? I'm sure he must have, yes. And yet the officer at the time, the arresting policeman said, kill the president, will you? How? Did, did you tell that to the House Committee? I did. I said that I don't know that it was the arresting policeman. I heard someone, and I couldn't even uh, identify who it may have been. I did hear somebody say, kill the president, will you? So somebody had already, without apparently any evidence, put those together. Isn't that true, sir? Evidently. Thank you. All right, fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Brewer. You may step down. Thank you.